Well, good afternoon. And right in front of me now, we have DT Minich, who is the top man at Kissimmee in Florida. And Kissimmee is probably the most popular destination in the USA for Brits to travel to, particularly if you want to stay in a vacation home. They want to make their own breakfast. They want to have the relaxation. And Brits love, love self-catering, as we call it. They right. love their own kettle. Yes. I'm sure you know all this. The news yesterday, DT, about the borders are opening here in the US must have been music to your ears. What's been the reaction so far? So obviously it was the news was announced just before the start of the IPW conference, which is the largest travel conference in, in the US. And um, I just think it has just changed the mood completely here. Everyone is just so upbeat and so positive and, and just, you know, have, we've been waiting for so long to get these borders open and there's so much pent up demand for travel to the US. So it was a great day. Um, I heard from a lot of, I've been hearing feedback today from tour operators and airlines um, uh, that, the, that yesterday was the phones just just w would not stop ringing for bookings and the website activity was at an all-time high so I think that you know once that announcement got out people were really like all right it's 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 time to travel to the US again and that is absolute music to our ears because you know the Brits have as you mentioned earlier the Brits are our number one long-haul um, country um, they have been um, coming to Kissimmee for generations and um, you know they're some of our best Best customers. We love the Brits, and we've missed them so much. So it's really going to be great to have those those the flights start coming back in, and the passengers coming, and and to really enjoy um, everything that we have to offer that you know they haven't been able to enjoy for 18 months. So um, it's just it's just really really positive and 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 you know very encouraging that we you know that we're looking forward to I think it's gonna lay the groundwork if, if the, everything opens in early November it's just getting us ready because I think 2022 is going to be just a, a just an unbelievable year for UK business to the to Florida and especially to Kissimmee and Central Florida good and I presumably there is a potential for getting business even this year you know yeah yeah of course you know there's uh, it's the the year's not over yet and we're only in October so right you know winter Sun and etc so that's good DT, what I wanted to talk about as well is that, you know, during lockdown, there's been lots of soul searching, lots of navel gazing within the tourism and travel industry about how we can build back better. There's been an increasing move towards value uh, tourism um, so that, you know, the communities are involved. Visitor satisfaction is of a perhaps higher level than perhaps it used to be. It's not just about numbers, uh, inclusivity, yeah. and also you know, environmental and cultural sustainability. Have have Kissimmee be thinking about those things? And if so, how how are you going to bring those things into action? Absolutely. Um, well, first of all, I think, you know, what, what we saw from a domestic market during the pandemic was um, we had so many visitors that had never... Um, done a vacation or a holiday in a in a vacation holiday home they'd always stayed in the traditional hotel motel type of accommodations and so we've had so many of these first-time visitors and once they discover the convenience and the value of the vacation home um, and the safety for right now um, you know it's just the popularity has gone through the roof 85% um, of our bed tax revenue during the pandemic was coming from the vacation home segment Pre-pandemic, it was around 50-50 with the hotel segment. So you can see a huge jump in, in the, the popularity of the vacation home. And we have, you know, almost 45,000 vacation homes um, in the inventory currently. And we've got a lot more under construction. So um, I think that's one thing that's benefited us is that we have all of this massive inventory in terms of holiday homes and things. Um, in terms of, you know, the whole... Kissimmee's a really, uh, people don't realize, but Kissimmee is a, is a very diverse um, destination. We have um, the second largest population of, of Puerto Ricans um, while they're U.S. citizens, but it's still, a, you know, we have the second largest population of Puerto Ricans. We have a lot of Latin, a lot of Latin American um, different countries represented in the population of Kissimmee and, um, you know, and a lot of great um, family owned and operated like ethnic restaurants and things from everything any kind of cuisine you can imagine and we was we were really pushing during the pandemic um that you know for locals to act like tourists and and do carry out when the restaurants weren't open and things like that and to really 
spend money in our local destination because we weren't getting the tourists um, because we really didn't want to lose those those kind of small mom and pop and that's that's what really makes a destination interesting is you know not the chain restaurants and not the chain stores but more of the local flavor and atmosphere um, and then the other thing that's really benefited us through all of this process um, horrible process we've been going through is you know that we are uh, not only do we have at, you know we're adjacent to the world's most famous theme parks but we have an abundance of ecotype tourism opportunities and things that people can do and experience outdoors and get to know the real Florida um, you know we are the those headwaters of the Everglades. So if you look at a state map of Florida, we're up in the central part and the water starts there at Shingle Creek and flows all the way south. So tremendous kayaking opportunities. We have some great zipline parks um, that you can zipline over alligator ponds and things like that. And then just the hiking and, and biking and um, you know that kind of a thing. So you know there, there's been a big, I think, resurgence in those types of activities. Um, and, you know, while most of our visitors still want to experience the theme parks, obviously, um, it's really nice for them to have a balance of maybe one day in the theme parks and then one day out in nature. And, you know, I say we're, we're such a lucky destination because, you know, one minute you can be in the shadow of the world's most famous castle or one of the world's most famous castles. Maybe Buckingham is a little more famous than Cinderella's Castle and the castle in Disney. But um, you're in the shadow of, of one of the world's most famous castles and then you know, 30 minutes away, you're in the shadows of two and 300 year old cypress trees um, in the start of the Everglades. So it's been a nice combination and, and um, you know, it's a nice combination for now, the travel now. And like I said, with the vacation homes, that's been really, really popular. It sounds very, very encouraging. And brand Kiss Me slightly changing uh, over the next year or so to, you know, more varied and more diverse, if you like, uh, Vacation Offerings. opportunities, yeah. yeah, yeah, that yeah. sounds very good. And we've had, we've even had some new restaurants and some things that opened in the last eighteen months. So there's, you know, and of, and obviously the theme parks are constantly reinventing themselves mm. and adding new things. And you know, one of the big, um, the big events, I guess, um, is the fiftieth birthday uh, anniversary celebration of Disney that will start October first and. You know, I have I have a friend, and I joke with her because she just had her birthday, and I'm like, you know, this this birthday celebration's been going on for two weeks, but Disney's gonna, you know, Disney Disney only does Disney way, yeah. and uh, so you know they're gonna have a birthday celebration for the next 18 months. Yeah, that's nice. Um, okay. But lots of great things planned there, and and lots of other things at some of the other um, attractions and theme parks that's going on, and and we've got about six to. 8,000 additional vacation homes um, that are permitted and, and coming out of the ground right now. So new product is on its way. And it's interesting because these homes, a lot of people don't understand. This is not like a, 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 a single, a, a person or a family renting their personal home. These homes are bought by investors and they're managed by professional management companies. And like Encore, there's 800 vacation homes. No one lives there. But they're purpose. They, we call it purposely built. They're built for only vacation. Sure. Yeah. And the interesting thing is, they changed all their all their plans over the course of the last twelve months. And they're incorporating in a lot of these homes one or two little mini offices where people can um, do Zoom calls and do sure. work. You know, and and so no one even knows where you are. You can do it from a va being on ho be on holiday and do your work and you know, close it off from the rest of the family and have a quiet Zoom room kind of yeah, thing. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we're seeing some of those kinds of changes. Some digital nomads Ex coming to Kissimmee. You know, me. yeah, mm -hmm. we're, we're, you know, we're kind of reinventing ourselves in, in so many different ways. It's very good. Well, I wish you the very, very best of luck. It sounds exciting. And uh, as I said, um, Disney may be having 80 months. I've been celebrating my 21st for 40 <laughs> years. 